Hello everyone. My name is Tracy. Welcome to another higher self hypnosis session. I have my lovely client Jeanette here. Not sure if the screen will be covered um, covering her face or not yet. We're going to see what happens in this session, but she has agreed to share it on social media because the, the reason and her and I just talked about this is because when you share the wisdom and the healing of a higher self with with someone else it helps to heal them if there's something they can resonate with and then the healing raises their frequency and because it's a collective consciousness it raises the frequency of everyone of the entire planet so we can spread this like a, a good bacteria <laughs> where it's just contagious where we can raise the frequency of multiple multiple people and then thereby raising the vibration of the planet so um so yay thank you for sharing it um, if there's anything super private, we're going to take it offline, super, super private, but otherwise we're going to leave it open for social media. So this is part one, Jeanette, where I get to learn everything about you so I can know which direction to take all the questions once you're under. And then we'll take a nice long lunch break. We'll come back and that's when I'll put you in a relaxed state. That's part two. Okay. And then I will put you under before I hit record. And then when I hit the record button, that's when you're going to be in a past life. So okay. we're going to, it'll just, the video will just pick up right there when you're in the past life. Then if your higher self is willing, uh, we will look at what you do in between lives. And then I'll call forth your higher self and ask all the questions that we're going to come up with now as you tell me your life story. Okay. So, um, and then remind me before we take the lunch break i am going i'm going to write it here my little sticky note i need to send you an email with a video and that's going to give you the coaching and a one minute homework assignment for you to do on our lunch break and give you the coaching that you need to prepare on what to expect when you go under it's a video i made while i was talking to a client rather than repeating the same thing every single time so okay. it's like 19 minutes long so you'll watch that as soon as we finish you have time to do that little homework assignment Mm -hmm. on your lunch break and then we'll we'll break okay. Um, okay so you already told me where you live and how old you are and we talked a little bit offline so we'll get back into a lot of that stuff yeah. like about mm -hmm. your career and you know what, what how to go forward in that but why don't you go ahead and tell me i think you said you grew up in mexico so why don't you go ahead and tell me about your life just significant events don't give me a play-by-play -play. oh in second yeah. grade this third grade this fourth grade this yeah. just Hit the highlights, hit trauma, hit relationships. Tell me what they were then, what they are now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, let's see the big events. So, um, I lived in, I was born and lived in Mexico until at the age of three. Um, okay. my mom and my dad split, um, about, I would say about when I was one and a half. And, um, at that point she, um, she moved to a different state in Mexico and I, and I lost connection with my, my dad, my biological dad at that point, she met someone, they got married and they came to the States. And six months later I came and I was in California. Um, during that time, um, I want to go back to the first time, like I had a really, that's bringing coming up to me. Like I had an experience, like, um, I could, I knew that there was more to, you know, the collective, I guess, since I was little, like my first earliest memory was when I was like two and I could see, I saw someone coming through the window and I remember being so scared and being little, you know what I mean? I remember my chunky little legs. And so that always, that memory always comes to my mind and it's never left me. So, um, I've always wondered what that was. So if I could ask my collective, you know, what I'm a higher self, what that was, who that was. That would be great because I've always wondered. So that was my first experience. Okay. So do you remember what it looked like or it was uh, just, I remember it was just a dark shadow. It was like, I, I remember, I feel like it was a man. Like I intuitively, I feel like it was a man, but I don't know who it was. Um, and I just remember like the curtains and the, and the air coming in. And I, like I said, I, at that, and then I remember my mom coming in and picking me up and, and rocking me because I was, cause I was crying. Um, but it was like a balcony because we were upstairs. I, I do remember that. Uh, but I was very little. Like I said, I wasn't, I don't think I was even walking at that point because I, I was like, I could, I remember looking down and seeing my chunky, you know what I mean? Chunky little feet. Um, or who knows? That might be a past memory. I don't know, <laughs> but past right. life memory, but that's something I remember ever since I was little and I couldn't figure out who that was. Um, so, it, um, 
going back, my mom came to the States and by the time I came to California, um, I already had two, sis two twin sisters that were okay, born. Hold on, slow down a little bit, slow down a little bit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when you came to California, you had two twin sisters that were yes. already born. Yes. Okay. So they were born in Mexico. No, they were born here in the States. I was the only one born in Mexico. Okay. So after you got there, you had yeah. twin sisters that were born. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does with her new guy yes yes correct and you never saw your dad again not until recently oh okay yeah hey big guy hey <laughs> my baby just came in okay <laughs> um and they were twin sisters yes they're twin sisters yeah uh, okay yeah when sisters were born and how yeah. about stepdad how did he treat you um it was it was interesting because the first time i saw him they told me that's your dad and i said that's not my dad <laughs> you know what i mean like that's not my dad and um so i immediately knew that was not my dad even though throughout my life you know they always said that's your dad i knew he wasn't my dad and he everybody knew he wasn't my dad but for some reason we pretended he was my dad um he was um he he caused a lot of trauma throughout my lifetime since shortly after I came uh, to live, you know, with my mom and him, um, sexual abuse began at that point since, since I was like very young at that age. Um, and then it just kept on getting worse and worse um, through my whole, you know, childhood up to, you know, my teenage years. Um, so that was really rough. Um, and I, um, but I, and, and, at that point, you know, I do remember talking to my mom about it and letting her know what was happening. And um, I remember being little and I hear, hear them fighting and then it would be like, oh, he's never going to hurt you again. It's going to be OK. And then it would happen again. And I would tell her and it would be and every single time it was my like I was the one that was getting harsh punishments. You know what I mean? I was the one that was being yelled at from my mom for letting it happen for, you know what I mean? Putting myself in that situation or. So I got to a point where I just let it happen and I wouldn't tell anybody because I kind of felt at that age, like I was my fault. It was my guilt because I was just in it. I was not part of their family because I was just, you know what I mean? I wasn't, you know, biologically his and I was just like, you know what I mean? An unwanted person in that family household. So that was very traumatic and it created a lot of, you know, issues growing up. Um, but with all of that being said there was some beam of light because i remember being little and i could see stuff like um like i remember like being in kindergarten and being able to see the orbs o over the kids in the playground and i would that would just like i forget about everything because i just focus on the beautiful colors around the kids and i would focus on different things that i would see that people couldn't see so i don't know if it was my imagination going crazy at that age because trying to you know but I do feel now as I'm going more in my spiritual walk that it was more than that. Um, so, so that was, um, that was rough. Like, you know, my, my childhood, um, I ended up having three sisters. So I have two twins and then a little sister. Did he sexually abuse them at all? No, just me. And do you think mom still knew that it was going on? I do. Even though you stopped telling? Mm -hmm. I do. Wow. Okay. So how'd that mm -hmm. make you feel? Um, at that, again, at that, at that age, it felt like it was just my fault. You know, it was a price that I had to pay in order to be in the situation, you know, to have a family. And because I knew that at that point I didn't, I, I thought, you know, well, my dad must have not loved me. That's why he left right and then i'm just unwanted i just have to be you know what i mean this is what i have to do to survive and it just became a situation where i just let it be you know what i mean it was what it was and everyone would you know like i guess my mom would just pretend like pretend like it never actually was happening and um i since have cut all communications with even her um and as a mother i i I still don't understand her reasoning, why she allowed 
Yeah. Yeah. Right to happen. So, so now you don't have any communication with mom. No. And is stepdad still around? He, he's still with, they're still together. I, that from what I know of, I don't know. I haven't really spoken with or known of them for, for a couple of years now, but, um, I imagine they are, um, did you ever confront him? I did. Yeah. Um, actually, How I confronted, old were you him, when you did that? I confronted him a couple of years ago and more cause I was going through, it was, you know, carry that baggage carrying on for so yeah. long. I kind of just, I remember I came home to my grandma was visiting and she, I came to say hi to my grandma, hugged her, kissed her, say, okay, I'm leaving like a five minute inter interaction. And then she, my mom guilted me. She's like, I hate how you just come to the house and just say hi, bye and leave. You don't even talk to us. I mean, you walked by your dad and didn't even hug and kiss him. And I'm like, and at that point, I just let it out, out. Like it, it just, I imploded and I said, how dare you? And I just said, and I even told him in front of him, you know, I said, this is what you did. This is what you did. And this is what you did. I'm tired of pretending like none of that ever happened. And I said, I don't, I'm, I'm to the point, I don't ever want to see, I, won't, I don't want to ever see you. And at that point, I told my mom, she could still be part of my life because I loved her. She's still my mother and part of my children's life, you know, but she would have to come to me that I was never setting foot in their home again. Um, and then she acted like, oh yeah, yeah, I understand. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I didn't know, blah, blah, blah. And she hugged me and I could feel like she was lying, like she was just pacifying the moment. And then the next day she's like, ah, she just basically dropped everything she owned that had my kids' pictures, my pictures, everything to my sister's house and completely cut communications with me at all. Like she cut all her ties with me. And so at that point it was, it was really hard because it's like I mourned the loss of a of a parent because and i had so much anger and i think it was really hard for me to get over that because um i just as a mother i just can't imagine doing that to my own children and so um i have a very supportive husband so last year i actually went to a woman's retreat for you know women that have had sexual trauma as a child and it really kind of helped me emotionally go to a better place and um it kind of also triggered my awakening i feel like after that point um i don't know like a veil was lifted if that makes any mm. sense like i could see clearly and then i'm like why didn't i just do this years ago because now i can actually breathe and i don't have that heavy weighing on my heart anymore that i had on a single daily basis so um yeah. it was so impactful to have Bro you know what I mean? Broken that tie and, um, and last year, actually, um, uh, yeah, last year. So I broke tie with her like 2 years ago. Um, I, I actually found my biological dad and I made contact with him and it's, it was such a beautiful communication because he, um, you know, he never did talk bad about my mother. And that's something that I, I'm like, wow, you never, he himself said, you know, I wasn't a good person at that point in my life. I, you know, I was just not good for your mom. And so we decided to split off. And then I was told that he, she married and moved away. And I, she's like, I did go visit you while you were in Mexico. But then once you moved away, I just, you know, I was told that you were happy and you were having a good life and just to let it go. And I didn't want to interrupt that. Um, so I was able to to meet her, him and his and his wife, and they all they welcomed me with lots of love and heart. You know what I mean, to their to their family, and I speak with him once or twice a week, and it's nothing but I love you, and I'm so happy that I got to see you. And he's older; he's he's um, pretty close to his seventies right now. So he was a lot older than my mom, I guess, when they had me. But um, it just it's good to have only have, have one parent. <laughs> Yep. And I didn't have a relationship growing up with him. Um, I do know, though, that I do have more siblings. Um, I've only met one of my siblings from, from you know what I mean? That I think How many other older. siblings do you have with him? So with um, his wife right now, his current wife, they have four. But okay. they're all older than me. So he was married to, or together with her before I came. 
and they had four kids before uh, three kids before me then they after i was born they my mom separated with him and he went back to her and had another child so in total we have four. Uh, okay. <laughs> and when he says he was not a good person he had a problem with cheating uh, so um so we know that there is probably another four siblings floating around uh, some are younger than me so but I don't know them. Um, and this is what I was told even from him and one of my older sisters confirmed it. But um, so I do have a lot of siblings and I don't know if I'll ever get to meet them all, but um, but I do, um, but I am happy that I got to meet him because that yeah. part has healed uh, like, oh, not even my dad wanted me, you know? And yeah. even, even his wife, um, um, uh, oh, her name, we call her Ophi. She is the sweetest lady. And she's like, you know what? He always thought about you and always wondered what came of you. So the fact that she even has said that to me means a lot because she has not, you know what I mean? Like another person would probably not like me because I was that yeah, child in between right. two, but she, in total opposite. So it's, she's like a light in such a dark woman. And I even told my husband that I feel like maybe she was an, a mother, a, a mother figure in another lifetime to me, because when I met her, we immediately clicked and we stayed up talking, drinking coffee, like till two or three o'clock in the morning when I was there with her, like we just immediately had this bond and she sees, and she says she sees me as a daughter. Um, so it just, I don't know that that's a good question to ask myself. Yeah. If there was some sort of other community, you know, lifetime bond with her, but, but yeah, it was a beautiful. And you call her Ophi, you said? Yes. Mama Ophi. Okay. Hold on. Let yeah. me go. Let me go to the questions then. Yeah. Let me put that over there. Um, has she had any other lives with Ophi, mm -hmm. her dad's wife? Mm hmm. And if so, was it a parent child relationship? And that is why they feel so bonded now in this lifetime. Love it. Mm -hmm. That's a really happy ending. You know what it I is. mean? At least you yeah. have one parent. I know what it's like to be cut off from a parent because I haven't yeah. had contact with my mom for many yeah. many many years but yeah, yeah i get it and it wasn't yeah. even she didn't even do something as like ah, like that is like the the whole thing with you but mm -hmm. do you feel like you have completely healed from all of the stuff i mean it sounds like you've done a ton of healing with I regard to the abuse or do you yeah. want to ask if there's any more or do you think you're yeah good? i think we should definitely ask if there's more healing that needs to be done um okay just because it was very, it was very traumatic. And there's even yeah. situations um, where this trust is not there, you know, like anytime. Trust uh, with who? Like men, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, it's, oh. and it's crazy because like, I don't feel like I don't trust men, but if they get too close and, and this is gonna be a little private, but, um, and you can share it if you want to. I, my, my children, I have always hugged my kids and loved on my kids. And I just tell them how much I love them all the time, just because that's something that I missed. Right. But my son now, he's 14, and he's taller and bigger than me. When he hugs me, even though I want to, I want to embrace his hug, a part of me still is reserved because I feel like I'm going to be taken advantage. Does that make sense? I don't know. If that yeah, makes sense. no, totally. <laughs> and okay, I feel so there's something there that. then. No, yeah. there's something. No, don't. You don't want to heap any other emotions yeah. on you, right? Right. Yeah. You know, it is. It is what it is. And yeah. That's where you're at. But let's. That's definitely an indicator that there's something there. Yeah. So, um, you know what? I'm hearing that it's maybe something on a cellular level, cellular imprints, mm -hmm. that your body's reacting like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, that makes sense. Um, are there any cellular memories or cellular imprints remaining impacting her now from the sexual abuse she experienced from her stepfather and if yes can you pull those imprints from her now and instead 
fill those cells with creators of and light and tell us what that looks like as you do it. How about that? Perfect. And then I want to ask, are there any other? You know what? I was <clears throat> I was walking my dog last night and I came up, I'm pulling up my phone because I came up yeah. with a question. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was exactly, but yeah. it might be relevant for you. So let me questions to add to the my my list that I send yeah. out to people. Like there's not enough already, right? <laughs> um Oh, it was just what traumatic cellular imprints does this person carry? <laughs> uh, you got it. Okay, so yeah. I say, so are there any any other traumatic cellular imprints that she is carrying that we could ask you to heal for for now? And if so, and if so, what is it and what does it look like for you to heal that? And then I'll say any others, any others, any others until we, because we want to get all that out, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so was it like a daily thing that he did? Pretty much. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. And, and it's to the point where, like, I have very, like, I think I've, uh, I blocked a lot of those memories. And I, and me and my sisters, um, my, my twin sisters, when I told them, they cut ties completely with him as well. And because they did, my sister shunned, my mother, my mother shunned them as well. And so. They chose we, sides. Yeah, they did. So they said, you know what, this is not okay. And, and, you know. Um, they even said to my mom, mom, we, we suspected stuff. We saw stuff and we told you, and you told us blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and, and he was not only, I mean, he might've not phys uh, sexually abused them, but he was very physically abusive, like would, you know, would hit with the belt and traumatize, like, you know what I mean? Like very like verbal abusive. Um, and so, so they had their form of abuse, maybe not sexual, but it was very, um, you know what I mean? Very verbal and physical, like, like, you know, beating a child. And, um, so at that point they also cut, um, ties with him and they said, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to have anything to do with him because, um, now our eyes are also opened because it all makes sense. It all ties down. And when they did that, she shunned them completely as well and even changed her phone number. She moved away. Like, I mean, she just completely, um, I don't know what was the, what's going on. And I guess it's a question like what's going on through her mind. Um, the only one that has communication with him is my little sister, but she was is such an age difference that she never really experienced what we experienced. She never went through any of the trauma um, that we did. So in her eyes, it's, it's totally different, but we still, you know, we, we don't, we don't shun her or anything for choosing sides or choosing to still have communication. She's still part of our lives. But me and my sis siblings, my my two twin sisters, um, our relationship actually has grown stronger because now we're not constantly being um, played against each other. Mm. And we were played against e from childhood to adulthood. We constantly were played against, you know what I mean? Against each other. So now we can actually heal and they can heal. And one of my other, my young, my sisters that lives in the same town I do, she's also going through her awakening and we've been able to awaken together and, and learn so much just spiritually, um, which has helped us heal. Okay, hold on. So did they live close to you or no? Um, so my, one of the twins does live in the same town as I do. And then is that the one my that's waking youngest up? sister? Yes. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then my youngest, youngest sister, she lives in a town next to us, which is about 15 miles away. And the other twin, she lives about an hour and a half. So we are all within driving distance of each other. Got it. Mm -hmm. So you guys get together sometimes? 
we do. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. So you've like yeah. recreated your own little family. Which we is did. Amazing. Yeah. 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 That's good that you have each other. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, wow. Yeah. What's going through mom's head that she knows, like, she can't deny Mm -mm. that any of this happened yet. She yeah. just still chooses him. Yeah. That is, you know, and I wonder, like, I don't know if we can ask my higher self, like, should I just let it go? <laughs> or should I just, what do you mean? Just let it go. What, like, what are just, you not letting go? Maybe just let, let the question of what is going through my mom's mind uh, you know what I mean what made her make those choices like it's always a question in my mind like what is she thinking as a mother why would you do that why this and so is it some kind of a connection she has with him or is she is she lost does she need help I, I don't know I I don't know when growing okay. up I would think she had no choice because we were little and she, you know what I mean? She was, a, she would, she was a, you know what I mean? A stay at home mom. She probably couldn't financially take care of us on her own, right. but now as a grown woman, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. Right. Um, Okay, so this is what I wrote. She questions mm -hmm. her mom and how, as a mother, mm -hmm. she can stay with a man and have allowed her husband to sexually abuse Jeanette and then especially, and, and, and then physically and verbally abuse the twin girls. Mm -hmm. What can you tell her about that with her mother? Can you tell us what she's learning or experiencing and why? Or is it something Jeanette should just let go of? And if your higher self says let go, I'm going to be like, how does she let go? Like, how do you, mm -hmm. how do you let go? Yeah. What Perfect. does that look like to let yeah, go? Absolutely. Do you meditate ever or no? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And we can talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to um, see that's because I kind of figured you did because mm -hmm. it sounds like you've just, you've kind of gotten a lot of healing. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So yeah, we jumped ahead a little bit. So how long, so why did he stop when you were a teenager? You said it lasted until you were a teen. Yeah. Um, it lasted until I moved out. As soon as I was able, so he was very controlling. I mean, to the point that, um, that I, that I would be dropped off school, picked up school. Like I couldn't have a cell phone. I couldn't, you know what I mean? I couldn't have any communications. I couldn't have friends. So very controlling. But as soon, um, I, I went to college, I met my husband and I married him as soon as possible. And I got out of the situation and Many times I thought, man, did I just marry my husband because I needed to get out? Did I really not love him? And I just saw him as a way out. But I've answered my own question many times because I truly do love him with all my heart. And I know that God put him in my path um, because he knew I needed him and he needed me because we definitely have. We have had, like I said, he was in the military, so we have had. Um, wow, so much happened you know he was I got pregnant he deployed came back whole different person to a baby he didn't really connect to very much when he was a baby because he was dealing with his PTSD um and we were in the military 10 years and when he got out you know I thought oh it, it's gonna get better you know his anger outburst his all this is gonna get better and and the sad part is I didn't know any better because that's the way I, my life lived. I always had someone being mean to me. You know what I mean? So I didn't know any better. And so um, I guess that's what kind of like just kept on holding that it's going to get better. Um, at one point, um, we I told him I couldn't live like that anymore and he needed help. And he went and he got his help and he did an amazing job. He was able to learn how to control his PTSD. Um, and then it was me my PTSD was kicking in and I was the one that was having all these situations happened. Wow. I went into a whole different subject than what you asked me. I'm sorry. But yeah, that's okay. We're, we're going ahead fast. So yeah. let's, yeah. um, let, let's back up just a little yeah. bit. Um, 
but okay so the abuse lasted until you moved out and you decided yeah. I'm, go I'm going I'm getting out of here mm -hmm. I'm going to college so you went to yeah. college mm -hmm. um and you really couldn't have friends or anything no communication yeah. and you never right. told anyone at school or anything huh no no and I was told when we were little, you don't talk about what happens in this house to anybody else. So now I know that I was being programmed, that I was mm -hmm. being, um, and even my mom would say that to us all the time. What happens in this house, you don't tell anybody. You don't tell anybody at school. You don't say anything since I was little. So you just didn't talk about any, anything. And unfortunately, now as a grown person, I do, I, I told my uncles and my aunts, and they had a suspected stuff. And had told, uh, confronted my mom about it, and she would always like say, "No, no, no, you're just imagining stuff." And then we'd move, and then it, and then they'd have communication again, and it happened again where they would question, and then she'd cut off communication, and then they'd move. So now it all makes sense of why we moved so much when we were little. Mm. You mean different states, cities, or what? Just different towns. Yeah. Wow. So your mom was like really in this. I think she was. Yeah. I really do feel like now looking back, she had to have, because there's just no way, no way yeah. that she couldn't. But I had that veil. Does that make sense? Like I had that, like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like, I wasn't seeing clearly, even as a grown person, I still kept on blaming myself for everything that had happened to me until yeah. that moment when I said, enough's enough. You, you know, this is, you no. Know, and, um, and once I did that, like my eyes were just open and I said, oh my gosh, like all of that was conditioning. None of that was my fault. I just was surviving as a child. When did that veil fall off? When you moved out, it actually was when me and my mom had that confrontation because she she was uh, making me feel guilty for just showing up, saying hi, bye, and leaving, not even spending five minutes at the house. And when she said, "You walked by your dad and didn't even hug and kiss him," how does how do you think that makes them feel? So that is what you know what I mean. Like I was just done pretending. I was so done pretending like we had this perfect little life, and that and it just at that moment is when I. I just said enough's enough. And then I, that's where it just all came out. Were your sisters there to hear that? No, my grandma was the only one there. And what did grandma do? Um, she just, <laughs> I'm going to go into another subject with my grandma. And I think that might, so she, she came to my house the following day and she's like, I just can't believe he did that. You know, I said, you should have just stayed back in Mexico with me. None of that would have happened. But then she told me something. And then after that, I actually like just decided not to have communication much with her because um, she told me that when she was a young girl, something similar happened to her. And she just decided not to tell anybody because you don't talk about stuff like that. And I think she was saying it to me, like, what happens? You just you don't tell people because and when she said that to me, I thought, wow. Okay, so here's another person telling me, giving me an example of what happened to her that should be ignored and not said and just, we don't talk about that stuff. And I just, at that moment, I'm like, I'm just not, I've got to cut these ties because they're just keeping me in, in, you know what I mean? Like covered, like where none of that should ever be spoken about, which is not the fact it should be spoken about. And I think that in my culture or just in any culture, it, it has been shunned. Don't talk about it. Pretend like it never happened. Hide it under the rug. And and I feel like that's what she was trying to ask me to do to keep the family where it was. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, all right. So you met your husband in college. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you graduate? Um, I graduated with my associates, but he actually went off and joined the military at that point. And that's when you were pregnant? You got pregnant before he left? Um, he joined the military and then okay. within 
Um, so he graduated from basic in August. He proposed in December and we got married by the following June. And then I was pregnant by okay. September. So it all kind of just happened within okay. a year and a half. Okay. And then he got deployed to where? Iraq. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was gone for how long? 18 months. Okay. All so right. Yeah. And then he. And then he came back. Was he discharged on like medical PTSD or something? He stayed in the military for. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You said 10 yeah. years he was military. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot. You yeah. said that. Okay. I yeah. got it. Yeah. Um, okay. So did you guys move around in the military and stuff? Um, no, our home base was always Washington state. Um, so okay. I was able to stay in Washington. He did go to different bases for a couple months for training or, um, so he was in the infantry, but then he went into aviation. So then he would go to like uh, Virginia to do training and stuff. So we'd, we would, I would fly with my little one at that point, you know what I mean? And stay with him for a couple of weeks, but I had a job. So I just, you know what I mean? I'd stay as possible close to home. Um, and anytime he had a reenlistment, he requested to stay in Washington just because of my job. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing? Uh, still working for the bank. I was a banker and I started okay. off, I just been kind of going up, you know what I mean? The, the financial doing Got everything. It. So, and I'm still in the banking industry, not with the same bank, but. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And so you had a son or a daughter? I had a son. I have a son. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is that your only child? I have three. I have uh, my oldest. Okay. He's 14. Okay. And then, um, shortly after him, two years later, we had Ashton and he okay. is, he is 12. Okay. And then, uh, after we were out of the military, I had my little girl and she's five okay. and she's five years old and she'll be six in August, but. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, and then husband, mm -hmm. after he got out of the military, went and got the help. Yes. PTSD. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and you just took his angry outbursts and the kids probably had to see that and take it. Unfortunately, and yeah. The kids at all or no? No, he was never physically abusive. He was just more like very angry all the time um, and would easily be like triggered of, you know, something, someone would say something that would just trigger him and, and like, you know, if we were at the store and something happened, he'd like go off on a person just for no reason. And so um it was hard um there was points where he would like punch a punch a wall um the the last outbreak where i told him that i wanted to split out we i wanted to separate because i couldn't take it anymore um uh, is when i realized he was actually suicidal because we were driving and it was my our anniversary and i said the only thing i want is for you to be nice to me today i don't want anything else let's go to dinner and i want to have just have it be nice to me and so I dropped off my daughter with my little sister and he got in an argument with my little sister about the car seat. And they were both arguing back and forth. And, and I asked and I was like, you know, the one thing I asked is for you just to be nice today. And it's like in the first thing we do, we're not even out of the driveway and you're already being mean. And he just went off and we're driving down the road and he pulls off the road and he grabs a gun. He's like, you just want me to shoot myself, don't you? Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I realized that that was just, I couldn't take it anymore. So I just kind of like said, no, no, I love you. Let's just go have a, let's go, let's whatever. Just kind of want that situation to escalate. But after that, I, I called his dad and I said, hey, this is what he did. And I can't, I can't live like this anymore. It's not safe for me or the kids. So we separated and, um, but I was still going to the doctor with him through the VA. And, but he wasn't telling him everything that was happening. He was just telling him he wasn't having, you know, he was depressed, but he wasn't telling them the extent of how it was. And I remember being with a doctor and him, I was going to explain to the doctor what was happening. And he looked at me and said, this is not the place where you talk about that stuff. And immediately that triggered me because oh, of what I was told. Right. And so I just walked away and the doctor like followed me and she said, he said, um, is this what's going on? And I said, yes. And then he's like, so within two weeks, he was in a center. And um, I honestly feel like that saved our marriage or else we probably wouldn't be together anymore. He was gone for about three, three to four months at the center. And it's just, it's just complete PTSD, you know, it, um, 
so yeah so that was very traumatic as well wow yeah. okay so um, i have had my my share of trauma so that is something that i need to ask my higher self is like why do i have to go through so much trauma in this lifetime why okay i love that question yeah. so um did she choose mm -hmm. to go through the trauma with her stepdad and her angry verbally abusive husband was he mm -hmm. was he just verbally abusive to you yeah he never was physical and okay. were, yeah and now he's He's done a 180 degree change. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I mean, when I, you know, when I just want to make, you know, like, and he's even going through his awakening too, which is crazy, but <laughs> because he's watching me go through all this and now he's also, he's always been supportive and he's always shown me he loves me, but he had some demons he had to deal with. Right. Yeah. Probably literal ones too. Mm -hmm. Um. So did she too? Did, because not ever, not we don't always choose the exact circumstances. We might choose yeah. lessons, and then yeah. we kind of come down here, and the lessons happen away in a way we didn't necessarily know they were going to happen, but yeah. we wanted the lesson. So let's yeah. find out. Did she choose to go through the trauma with her stepdad and her angrily, angry, verbally abusive um, husband? husband or why did she experience these things were there lessons she wanted to learn if lessons what are those lessons yeah, as learn she learned them and how can she keep the gold of those lessons and release the 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 pain from them mm -hmm. right yeah because that's what our soul does or our yeah. higher self it's almost like it skims the beautiful lessons off of it and lets go of the trauma but on a conscious level and on a soul level we don't we're not always able to do that and then we mm -hmm. carry it we can carry it from lifetime to lifetime right um, okay, so let me save this and go back to the note. So he did that thing and then he was a different person as soon as he came out or, and did he, he stay did. in therapy after that or? He did. Yeah. He stayed in therapy and, um, group counseling with other fellow veterans, um, for a while. He actually, they just stopped because they stopped because of COVID and it just kind of broke away, um. But he still does a really good job. He had a couple outbursts afterwards, but this has been over a year and a half now. Um, so it's been, uh, it's probably even been longer than that. I think probably two years now. So, and he hasn't had any kind of like PTSD, you know, situations. He's learned how to notice when he's about, you know what I mean? When something triggers him and to step away from the situation. Um, but it also helped when I went to my, you know, women's retreat so that I can learn my triggers. So that way, what we were doing is we were feeding off each other a lot. You know, I would have my triggers and he would be my trigger. So I would activate another trigger and then he would activate another one of my triggers. And we were basically like poison for each other, if that makes sense. And oh, okay, right. Yeah. And so, um, it's taken a lot of lots of tears, heartache and work to get to where we're at right now. It was not an easy path for sure. Okay. But now you're super happy or what? Yeah. I mean, I've always loved him and he's always loved me, but it was never easy. And now we're, I, I always say like, I'm not, I don't want to chink myself, but we're doing really well. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. We have been in a very good situation. Um, I don't think there has been a, a trigger in over a year. And so that has been, has been really good. And I mean, like we haven't even fought. I mean, we argue like every marriage couple, like, Hey, this is not what I want. I want this, you know what I mean? But where that in the past, I couldn't even tell him, you know, I don't want 
you know, a soda, I'd rather have water that would turn into a fight. Now I can say that and, and you know what I mean? And not turn yeah. into, to a fight. So. So he tried to be controlling before. Yes. Yes. And I think, you know, um, there was a situation like where I remember him telling me that he left and came back to a whole different person. Um, and he was expecting a person who he could tell what to do because that's who I was raised. I, you know, I was, I would just follow, I would be a follower. Okay. You tell me to do this. I'll do it. But when he was gone for a year and a half, I was a single, basically a single mom raising a baby. So I had to learn to take care of my own stuff, how to take care of my own bills, how to take care of everything going around. So I didn't need someone telling me, go do this. You know what I mean? I just would take care of it. And that was like totally different because it wasn't the same person he married. You know what I mean? So he had to readjust to the person that I had to become in that year and a half. And then I had to readjust to the person he was now because he wasn't that sweet, you know, guy I met at college anymore. He was a, you know, a, a, a man who had gone into the military and was in a war for 18 months. You know what I mean? So he was a whole different person. It's like just different. Wow. Okay. Um, any questions about him or the marriage or anything like that? Or are we going to move on? Um, I would like to know, um, <laughs> I guess my biggest question is like, if anybody would have been in our shoes, we'd, I don't think we would have, we would have like stayed, like, do we have like a soul contract on this um, lifetime? Because, because we just can't let go of each other. Even when it was really, really bad, we would not let go of each other. Does that make, you know what I mean? Where anybody else would have just thrown their hands out and I wanted to. And when, even when I stepped away for like a week or two, I felt like my whole, like, I just, like, I had to come back to him. So I don't know if there's like a soul contract that we have. And if we've had this in the past as well, that were, I don't know, like, I, I, if I were to use my intuition, I would probably think that, um, we agreed that we were going to help each other this lifetime mm -hmm. with our traumas, but but I, I'd like to know if I'm I'm on the right track with that for sure. Yep, I got it. So I said, do her and her husband have a soul contract to be together and lessons to learn and have they learned them all? Or what is it they're still working on, if anything? And mm -hmm. have they been together in other lifetimes? Yeah, perfect. Let's paste that there. Okay. So, all right, so we did all that and you were working your way up in a bank and mm -hmm. what about being a mom? How'd that go? Um, it was, it was very hard, um, girl raising my boys because with my boys, I was still dealing with the trauma that I had as a child and, um, it was, it's hard for me to remember, rec remember all the beautiful memories we have. If it, they're not in pictures, I don't remember the, the memories. And so that hurts because Okay. Sorry. So what's making you cry about the fact that you can't remember um, the beautiful things uh, with your kids? I feel, I feel like, like I you missed out. Ah, uh, okay. Because I was dealing with my trauma. I was dealing with Trent's trauma, my husband's. And I don't, I've always tried to tell, show my kids how much I love them. And, and you know, if I did not take a picture of a, of a memory, I don't remember it. Ah. Uh. And so with my little girl, it's totally opposite now because with her, I cut those ties, those toxic ties that I had. And I feel like I'm, I'm definitely enjoying her, your her, her child's heart more than I did my, my boys. And I feel kind of guilty for that. 
I know yeah. such good kids. I mean, they are the kindest hearted kids in the world. I mean, they they show so much love and compassion to everyone. And I feel like my boys that I kind of let them down as a mother when they were little because I was not all there because I was dealing with my uh. own my own oh gosh, what is it called? My own my own inner demons you know what I mean from the yeah. traumas that I had and then dealing with their dad's trauma so you know my oldest I apologize all the time I'm so sorry for you having to deal with that when you were a baby or seeing your daddy get mad or seeing you know I try to shield them as much as possible um but I do I mean if I could ask my higher self to to bring a download to my babies just to kind of feel yeah. whatever yeah. kind of cellular do you damage. do you feel like they have um trauma and damage from that i mean do you see it in them at all or i mean i'm sure that I, your apologies oldest, yeah. is a lot of healing for them i know my oldest I has to it. because he always says i don't want to be like my dad mom i'm sorry for getting mad at uh, you oh and, and sometimes when he gets mad he he gets mad like the way his dad would get mad you know what i mean like just buff up and and just get so mad so i feel like he's he's he learned how to get mad like his dad and he knows that and he does i'm so sorry mom i did that or um so i feel like more my oldest my middle child um maybe there's a little bit but the most is my oldest um okay my little girl the last outburst that trent had was when like she was two and and that's when we basically separated because he had an outburst and started breaking stuff. And after he was done and he had calmed down, I asked him, where was your daughter during the whole time? Can you remember where she was at? He's like, no. And I said, I can't either. I don't know where she was at. Like, I was trying to calm you down. I was trying to, and I don't know what happened to her. Like during the hour yeah. that he was going through an outburst of breaking stuff. And I don't know where she was at. I don't know if she was hiding. I don't know if she was sleeping. I don't know where she was at. We don't know where she was at for that. And that's when I told, you know, like that was one of the other things that just kind of like we were going off, you know, and so if she does have it, it's probably more in a, you know what I mean? Like a cellular just, level yeah. because yeah. I don't think she'll remember it. But so if I could just bring some kind of, of healing for yeah. that. Okay. Let's do that. I got an idea. So, and then we got to get rid of the guilt. Okay. And the self condemnation for that. Um, for you not being there for your sons, like you said. Yeah. Those were your words. Okay. Yeah. So she holds guilt. Let's start with that one first. She holds guilt because of her kids being exposed to the effects of her and her husband's traumas and outbursts and like she wasn't a mom who was able, who weren't able mm -hmm. to be really present for her children. Where is she holding this guilt? In her body, what color is it? And you pull it now and replace it instead with the energy from creator of complete love and acceptance and tell us what that looks like. Do you feel like you you can't forgive yourself? Uh, should, do we, should we ask if you need yeah, to hold that? I need to, yeah, let's do that. Okay. She also holds unforgiveness towards herself for that same thing. Where is she holding that unforgiveness 
And can you pull it now and replace it instead? With, okay, another question just popped in my head. Hold on, just help me remember um, mm -hmm. generational. Help me remember the word generational. Mm -hmm. um, and replace it instead with the energy, total forgiveness, total self-forgiveness, total forgiveness. And tell us what that looks like. Okay, so here's the other question that popped up, and I'm going to pull it off my phone. Give me one sec. Uh, oh, no, I wanted to go back there. What inherited ancestral belief patterns does this person carry, if any? But we're going to we're going to touch on your kids first. But I just okay. want to add that before I forget. Mm -hmm. What? Because it sounds like grandma to mom to you. We got yeah. stuff going on there, right? I do agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. What traumatic? Wait, what inherited? See, you got the benefit of me listening to this audio book last night that triggered these questions. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm walking my dog, listening to this, and I'm like, you know, my big husky, and I'm like, yeah. oh, hold on, slow down, slow down, slow down, stop, stop, stop. I need, I need to type this down so I'm making him stop in the middle of the sidewalk while I type my question because I was listening to this audio book that was just triggering more questions for me. Yeah. Um, what inherited talks in the Spirit what? talks in a, I said spirit talks, you know, to us in many ways. So he's yes. preparing you for today. Yep. Okay. All right, let's go back to the kids. So mm -hmm. I like this one. I do this one a lot for people. My eye is just watering like crazy. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Um, okay. Um, are you able to go back to the time when her children were in utero? Because he was still having outbursts, mm -hmm. probably when your middle son, he wasn't around for your oldest son while he was, yeah. you were pregnant with him, but your middle mm -hmm. one, he was probably still having those outbursts and with your daughter, right? Yeah, and well, in with my oldest one, I probably did have a lot of trauma um, just because he was deployed and um, he was part of a special ops unit where I wouldn't get to talk to him for for weeks. Um, and I remember just breaking out in hives just from the stress because I'd hear of a casualty in the unit, but they wouldn't release anything out. And so I would break out in hives completely through my whole body just of the stress, which I never have done before other than when I was pregnant with him. And then when Triton was born, TJ, he had his whole body. He has, he suffered from eczema from some sort of a like skin itchiness, which oh, is the same no. thing that I would burst out yeah. and I cannot like, no matter what they recommend. And it's, he still has his skin issues, but I would burst out in rashes during my stress. And I know that that is trauma that he has. Right. Let's deal with that too. Yeah. Okay. So are you able to go back to the time when her oldest son, we're going to start with him. Oldest son was in utero. What? A bubble of unconditional love and light around him to shield him from mom's stress, worry, and fears. And then, and that would later shield him from the energy and effects of dad's angry outbursts. And let that be a buffer from all of those things and keep it there around him. Until today.
and tell us how that will change and impact his life now that you went back in time and did that for him. And then, can you also put the same bubble around the other two children the same way to also shield them and tell us how that will impact their lives now. And then with regard to her older son, even if it's working with his higher self, are you able to pull the trauma from him on a cellular level and remove the effects from the stress and anxiety mom experienced while pregnant that she believes is contributing, is the cause of his current skin conditions, right? Skin conditions? Yeah. And tell us what that looks like, looks, and how that will help him now. Can we get it to heal his skin? conditions how about that perfect yeah okay all right let's go back to the notes okay all right what's next so do we want to do you feel like there's anything else we need to deal with around all of that or do you want to start talking mm -hmm. about what we were talking about off camera before we came on which yeah. is your reiki practice and your career and all of that and kind of take it more as a let's yeah. go from this point you want to do that yeah. okay let's awesome. do that mm -hmm. okay so how did you start to get into reiki and all of that and decide you wanted to start doing reiki on people Okay, um, so it goes back to Trenton, my husband. He um, okay. he went to the doctor, and the doctor told him his chakras were out of line. So he came home. A doctor doctor said that? <laughs> yes. The VA doctor told him his chakras were out of line. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's awesome. I love that doctor. <laughs> so my husband came home. Trent came so mad. <laughs> He's like, you're not going to believe what he said. He said, all my issues are because I mean, my chakras are out of line. And I, and I remember telling him, okay, like, calm down because they can't figure out, you know, like how to get you right. Like you, all of your sickness is correct. So, or your issues, like, so let's like just humor him and see what it is. And it's like to do it. And he's like, well, did he, I'm like, did he tell you what to do to get your chakras on? He's like, no, I didn't even give him a chance. I just told him he was full of shit. And I just walked away. <laughs> And I was like, okay. So then I started learning about chakras and I learned about Reiki and how it helps with that. But he's that person that would never go to someone. Like he would not go to anybody to do that. Like he just, it's just not the type of guy who would do that. Right. So then I learned that I could get, I could learn to do it. And, uh, I, and that at that point, I was already starting to awaken to my like I wanted to get back to the abilities I had as a child, like being able to say, I, I think I was able to see spirit as a child. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure because, you know, I have my egoic mind that thinks, oh, it was just my imagination. But right. my knowingness almost won't say I did. I don't know more. Um, but. So I was working and learning about that and just listening to a lot of podcasts and just being really open to that ability over that possibility. So um, I took a course on on it and I was able to get um, certified and I and I started practicing on my husband and he absolutely loves it. And even my oldest, he 
when he is happy and like he can't sleep, he'll tell me, Mom, will you do Ricky on me? Because then I sleep like I felt like I slept for a whole week when I wake up. Uh... So they love it. And then my little one, she told me last night, which is really interesting because she's got an ear infection, but she will not take medicine. She just doesn't like medicine. So I said, baby, can I at least do, let me do some Reiki on your ear to try to heal it. And she's like, no mom. And I'm like, well, why, why don't you want me? It's just me putting my hand on your ear. And she said, you feels like you're giving me a million shots when you do Reiki oh. on me. So like, and now I know like she feels the energy in a different way. Um, you know what I mean? When I touch her with doing, so she, she herself like is identifying. And like, when I do something, she's like, mom, are you doing Reiki? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it just, she, she knows. Um, so anyways, that's how I started. It all started kind of just really, um, learning. And so now I'm, I'm taking more courses to learn, learn more about energy healing and trying to activate like more of my like clairvoyant abilities, my clear, uh, you know, Clear, I can't say clear artisan abilities just to kind of hear spirit. Um, I've with with doing Reiki, I've had some some messages come through, and uh, you know when I'm you know with my the people I'm doing, and I'm letting them like, hey, I'm seeing this. How does this relate with you? It relates correlates really similar to something that's going on in their life or what's happening or a loved one that has passed away. So that mean you know that gives me that. Oh, okay, I am doing something right, but but yeah, that's so oh, quick. Quick question. Um, oh, would you have a paper to a I pen? do? I do. Mm -hmm. Um, have you ever heard of the Boulder Psychic Institute? No, oh, I think you will love it. Okay. Um, Boulder, so yeah, Boulder, Boulder, Colorado. So you start out with it's called Self Healing 101, mm -hmm. which literally like every person should take it is 101 and 102 mm -hmm. like they should be like must-haves for life yeah um amazing and they're it's only four weeks an hour and a half a week on the phone that's oh, it wow. yeah yeah and it's super inexpensive it's like a hundred dollars for the month oh wow um and then you will like 103 a lot yeah 103 you can do 102 and 103 at the same time so like if they have the 102 call on monday for an hour and a half and it's on the phone it's not even video yeah. so they'll have like on monday night the 102 call and then wednesday night maybe you'll have the 103 call so you're doing them simultaneously and then you get like a 50 dollars discount anyway yeah. for doing them together so it's really awesome but um 103 is 101 and 102 lay the, lay the foundation for like literally everything you would want, not everything, but what yeah. you'd want to know in order to shield and protect yourself and all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and really awesome meditations and 103 will introduce you to your psychic abilities because Ooh. their belief and, and teaching is everyone is psychic. Mm -hmm. And then you will likely want to go on to their monthly course um, it's like, it was, it, I don't know if it still is, but it was like $200 a month if you do auto draft mm -hmm. and, um, it's intense. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's still only once a week, yeah. an hour and a half on the phone, but it's, I can't even begin to describe to you how amazing the training is. Like you will learn things. It's just like, oh my God, how did I ever live without this? It's yeah. like drinking water when you're just dying of thirst. Oh wow. You will love it. Uh huh. And then what you'll do is you have to practice doing psychic readings. Ooh. And they teach you. They teach you how to do psychic readings. There's your hand held the entire way. You'll do like energy healings on people. You'll do psychic readings. Um, if you want to, once you graduate from that, you can go off on the track and just continue further into their more like graduate program. Yeah. Or you can do animal, um, animal Reiki, I'm uh, not animal Reiki, animal healing and readings and things yeah. like that, or stay on the people track. Yeah. But, um, I'm sorry. I'm having issues with my eye. What the heck? You're um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's just watering and burning. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, I think you will really love it. I okay, did that, I will do that. that course for a while. I went I maybe four or five months and then it was just too much with my work. Like I, mm -hmm. I couldn't commit to the 
I loved the month, the weekly trainings. Like I got so much out of it, but I just being a psychic reader is just not where I want to be. Yeah. And that felt like more of a burden and it brought me more stress and burden feeling yeah. than it then outweighed the amazing course because I just yeah. felt like I wasn't doing the deal. But anyway, yeah, because I'll that's not my track, but it sounds like that's the kind of yeah. stuff you like, but yeah, it is phenomenal. Okay. I will definitely look into that. Yeah. And they used to, I don't know if they do anymore, but they used to have courses starting every month, oh, like okay. the one-on-one. So if not, they may have moved it to every other month or something, but if you can't yeah. get in in April, you'll probably be able to get in in May. Right. Yeah. Well, it's something to look at because I'm, I'm taking this other course where it's um, teaching me how to do like energy healing. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's a, it should be done with the course like around June. So it would probably work out really well. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, that probably would be really interesting for you. And, yeah. and you know what you could do? You could go on their calendar. Oh, this would be great. Go on their website and mm -hmm. get an undergraduate reading. Ooh. So those are undergraduate students that are practicing. And they might literally have just started the program. They might be a year into it. They might be yeah. two years into it, whatever it is. And then... Compare that and get a graduate student reading and compare uh, the difference, right? Yeah. Compare the difference. Yeah. Um, so the undergraduate ones, just keep in mind, they're just practicing. If it doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't resonate with you. Don't mm -hmm. walk home with it, right? Right, right. Um, but then compare it to the graduate ones. Those are pretty good. The graduate ones are pretty, and they're super inexpensive, like 15 bucks. Like they're oh. super cheap. Yeah, yeah. super cheap. I so awesome. um, I would definitely compare with the two. The, when you sign up for the class, you get a free undergraduate reading. Um, so you could always go for a second one and then compare it again or whatever, yeah. but, or maybe start with a graduate one. And then when you join the class, get your free undergraduate one. Right. And just yeah. see kind of how it goes. But yeah, yeah, right away when you, when you take the 101 class, they give you a free undergrad reading because I think they want you to see how, how cool it is to learn how yeah. to do that stuff. That would, that's definitely resonating because I do feel, um, like that, that really calls me. Yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah. I, I feel like there, there is something there and more, um, you know, even if we could, maybe we could put my higher self if, if what I, when I was little and I'd see like the, you know, the, the halos, not ours, but the halos. The halos. Yeah. Halo, yeah. The halos, uh, over the kids. Um, and I'd see like. Please don't think I'm crazy because I was little, <laughs> but I, oh. I was, I would sit in outside and I, um, I, cause I was very like a lonely, like child, or I was either very social, like it just depending on what had happened. You know what I mean? Okay. That situation. Yeah. So, um, I remember one time I was sitting there and I was, and I could, I could see like giants running in the background like but they were kind of like see-through if that makes any sense they weren't like mass like you know what I mean but yeah. they were see-through and I could see them running and they were wearing like I'm gonna call it like white clothes like just like white clothes like like white cotton clothes with just a rope tied around their their um their waist and then the girl had like some kind of flowery colors on her dress and they were just running on the fields and it was in California so it was kind of like like it's hard to describe but the, the back of the mountain and I could see them running and I would sit there and just watch them all the time and when I was home it depended on where we lived because we did move to different houses there were certain things I would see like a little person always following me like 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 a I would say probably like either an elf or a um a leprechaun i don't know but it was a little person um and then i had like this there was this one situation where um and shortly after that everything stopped because it, that's where trauma got to the point where i was actually really like if it was molestation to the other level you know what i mean so um the last, that's right well before it stopped, I, I remember laying in my bed and I could hear um, the like ants, like does that make sense? Like the insects, I could hear okay. insects talk. And I remember laying in bed and I could hear the, my mom was like uh, using the hose to 
get rid of the ants uh, in the patio. And I didn't even know she was using the hose, but I could hear them crying and yelling. And I remember jumping out of bed and going to her and I was like, I'm like, you need to stop because they're in pain and it's hurting them. And I was shunned and told to go back to sleep. And, um, and then during that time, I think like I was really like, my abilities were going crazy because I would feel, I would see like this white shadow coming down and I would wake up and tell my mom, Hey mom, there's something happening here. Like the doors are opening. There's cats in the house and no one's let them in. And there's literally, and there was, there was cats in the house and she would get me and put me in the cold shower with water. Like, just like take me a shot, a bath in the coldest water possible and then put me to bed. So at that point, like it still would happen. I would just not go to her. You know what I mean? And I just sit in my bed, not knowing what was happening around me. Um, a few months later, something really horrible happened, you know, with the sexual abuse and I completely, everything stopped. So he was actually like full blown raping you. Mm -hmm. And I was like 10. And so at that point, everything stopped. Like I did not see anymore. I did not hear anymore. I just, I, everything just, you know what I mean? It just completely stopped. And, um, so then I always wondered, you know, at, at that point, I thought I lost my ability because I'm no longer worthy. You know what I mean? To, to see any of that, you know what I mean? And, um, now I know that maybe I just maybe just stopped it because my poor mind could not have handled that plus that going all at the same time. And so maybe it was just a protection that God put on me like, okay, this is, this is not where we're going to, we're not going to focus on this because you're going to have to be dealing with all of this other stuff happening. So now I think that that's what happened. Not that I was not worthy of it, but growing up, I thought, man, I'm just totally not worthy of anything because everything has been taken away from me. So. So if we could ask higher self, um, you know, if it was, you know, blocked because I would, I had to deal with, and is it ever going to come back or was it just my imagination trying to, you know, keep me, I don't know, like, am I making any sense? Yes. Okay. Hold on. I'm working on the questions. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, she thought she lost her ability to be connected to, to spirit at about the age of, at the age of 10, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because she and wondered if she was no longer worthy, but what happened there? Why did it shut off? She felt like everything was taken away from her then. Was she blocking it? Will it ever come back? Can she be, can, can that be reconnected to her now? And mm -hmm. can we just reconnect those cables, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So maybe someone, they, maybe somehow they got cut. Um, uh, but before that I wrote, you could see halos over kids' heads. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. Oops. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. okay, so we're back from a quick break. Um, okay, so we're starting to talk about your Reiki. And so are you still doing Reiki on your husband? I am, and I, um, I do it with, like, just friends or family, trying to get more practice before I start doing this full time. And this is um, what I wanted to ask my higher self since 
time is not linear. I mean, time is irrelevant, right? You have the present, mm -hmm. future, it's all happening. Mm -hmm. um, I worked really hard to be in the career that I'm in right now. I mean, okay. long hours. I um, dedicated so much time to finally make it to where I'm at. So my guilt is letting it all go and moving to something that, um, it will, you know, that will not be income wise, you know, the same. And so I want to make sure your belief, that, right? That's my belief. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. my only belief. Yeah. And so my belief is that, um, that, you know, that I'm, that I'm making a mistake because I always doubt myself, any choice that I make, I'm always doubting myself. And so, um, in my heart, I know that I want to go more towards the spiritually Reiki healing, um, all of that, you know, being able to help with that. But I always think, man, am I, am I not doing the right choice for my children's future career? You know what I mean? Future for financially for my family. Um, but at the same time, here's the kicker, no matter how much money I have, how much money I get, it always feels like I never have enough. Does that make, I don't know if that makes any sense. So like I can be making a really good month and get more money than I could have gotten when I was a teller for you know a year and okay. it just goes. Like, you know what I mean? It just leaves as fast as it comes in. And so I don't ever have a kind of a, I know this is kind of silly, but like some kind of a blockage and being able to hold on to it. Or if there's some kind of something that I need to deal with, because I, I know that I, I'm manifesting it, it's coming to me, but it just goes away. So it all goes into that, I guess, in that same question is, is, is it something that I'm creating in my own belief system? I don't know. Ooh, I just thought of a question. Okay. I love your face. <laughs> I love this stuff. It excites me, right? I'm such a nerd, right? No. I get excited. <laughs> oh my God, that made my eye water from laughing. <laughs> I'm like such, I'm such a nerd. I'm such a junkie. <laughs> kitty, kitty. Hi, baby. Okay. Um, the question was, um, um, we would like to hear a message from money. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you money? Mm -hmm. flow into Jeanette's life, but then you leave so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's no and flow <laughs> and flow right back out. Yeah. What is going on? Is it something she is it something she is doing or a way she thinks or believes, thinks or feels a way that she thinks or feels about you, or is it something else? Tell us what she can do to welcome you to stay longer. And what can she do to invite more of you into her future in a career as a healer. Oh, yes, that gave me chills. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. Can we do your session now? <laughs> let's just stop and let's just go now. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. I want to get to that question now. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, awesome. that'll be interesting. I've yes. never asked that question that way before. It's so fun. Oh my gosh. That's going to be fun. Okay. 
Um, okay. So the whole, because money is energy. So mm-hmm. we're just going to really talk to the energy mm-hmm. of money. Um, okay. And so, and then you have a belief that you're not going to be able to make it the same. So let's yeah. find out what's going on there. Because you said, well, it's obviously not going to be the same as what I'm making now. What? Yeah. I'm going to pause the recording for just a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. We had a nice long chat off the yeah. camera with some great stuff. Um, it wasn't needed for the session anyway, um, but we bounced some good ideas off of each other. So that was yeah. cool. Um, okay. So we talked about money. Yes. Um, okay. So what you were, you mentioned to me off camera by December, mm-hmm. you want to be full blown because you're where you're working now, your contract ends. Yes. Okay. For, with the bank that you're working for her mm-hmm. contract with the bank she currently works for will end in december yes and she wants to have her spiritual business up and booming yes. by then yes yes up and booming And we also talked about, and I do want to put this on camera. We also talked about the fact that people believe some, not not everyone believes this, but it's almost like people like to judge and categorize, oh, a pastor should not make very much money because they're in service and helping people's souls, Mm -hmm. right? No one likes to see a wealthy pastor. No. No one wants to see a wealthy pastor even though they are some of the hardest working people you will ever meet. They sleep, eat, and breathe for their congregations. Right. Okay. I mean, I grew up in the Christian faith and I'm very, very close to my previous pastor that I had for many years. We're very close on a friendship level now with him and his wife and their family. And um, that man dedicated every minute of his life to the people that he served. Every minute of his life. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, consumed him right Mm -hmm. everything he did was out of love for those people Mm -hmm. and he built this amazing beautiful highly successful church that his children are now taking over and he's gone off and retired and is living this great life in another state where it's nice and warm and sunny and and I just think it's so amazing and wonderful and I would never in a million years begrudge him of having any kind of financial success at all because he sacrificed more than a person going to a nine to five job or running a company ever could do and did more good in this world, serving his community and those people than those people will ever do. And so, but there's this stigma, right? Yeah. And, and I think it falls too on spiritual healers. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone in like a service type thing, but it's okay for a psychologist to open a big practice because that's a traditional job and it's accepted in society, but this is like on the fringe and it's not, and you're serving people, you're supposed to be helping people. And it's, it's like this sacrificial mentality. You should be sacrificing your finances, Mm Miss Healer. You should be sacrificing your time, your energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That instead of being with our family, we should be sacrificing it for other people and not expecting a lot of return, which that is such limited thinking and such low frequency. And I'm not saying take advantage of people. That's not what I said either, mm-hmm. right? I'm um, but and the because because the market always sets the rate. Yeah. Right. It's just Mm -hmm. like in real estate. You can ask five million dollars for a home, and you're not going to find anyone to buy it until you bring your hot price down to eight ninety nine. Right? You're in the mortgage business. Yeah. You can ask whatever you want for a home, but is it going to sell? Yeah. No, because the market determines the rate. You have to have a meeting of the minds, and someone has to see the value in that home. And then the other person has to be willing to accept that value. And so there's always a meeting of the minds. Right. And so if you wanted to charge $500 an hour for Reiki, the market's not going to pay that. Right. Right now. Okay. (laughs) The market's not going to pay $500 for an hour of Reiki. Right. Okay. Now, if you were a healer 
that had a reputation of literally being able to help people get out of a wheelchair who have been crippled their entire life and word got out. Yeah. Jeanette did that. Yeah. She is this amazing, miraculous healer. People would go, oh my God, she's only $500 an hour. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 500. Are you kidding me? 500. I'd pay 5,000 for that. I'd pay 50,000 for that. Yeah. To be able to walk again after being in a wheelchair my entire life since birth. Yeah. So you see, it's all in the value that people perceive. Right. And like I shared with you when we were off camera, the people who, my affirmation, the people who reach out to me, to me for my service, are qualified, can afford my service, and are ready to make real change in their lives and appreciate what I offer them. See the value in, I'm going to, I might add that, see the value in and appreciate what I offer them. Yeah. And if they don't, and if they're not willing to pay that price, then we're not a match and that's okay. Not yeah. everyone's a match for every single thing, or you'd have so much business. You'd never, you would sacrifice yourself again. Yeah. Because you, that means you're charging too little. Yeah. Right. Right. Tracy. That's that's you're charging too little. It's even <laughs> eye opening. <laughs> It's eye opening to like my current work. I, you know, like one of the things that's like, I get, I'm so busy, but then I'm busy with things that I, that I should not have to be busy about. Like there's just, I try to make everything work so hard. It just, you just opened my mind. Sorry. Like it just really resonated. <laughs> yay. 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 Because if you find yourself in your Reiki practice and you're booked yeah. out eight months, that means uh, the pricing was a little off. Yeah. Right? Yep. You got way more demand yeah. than you have supply. And whenever that happens, it's just economics. The price has to go up to reduce the demand. Right. Because there has to be equilibrium. Everything, it's the universe. Everything wants balance, equilibrium. Yeah. So whatever a yep. healer is charging for whatever their service is, it just means that's where their equilibrium is because the people who are coming there are the ones seeing the value in it and the market has determined that. But people love to go around judging. Mm -hmm. Oh, you shouldn't be. That should be something that you basically give away. Why mm -hmm. would you not give it away? It's to help other people. Yeah. Right? Yep. Well, food helps other people too, but you don't walk in the grocery store and go, uh, I'm not paying $5 for that bag of rice, but I'll give you two. Yeah. Exactly. You're not doing that. You can't do that. Right. But that's not socially, that's socially okay. Right. But people try to make it normal. But anyway, so it's just a matter. It's our mindset. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And our beliefs. And if their beliefs don't align with yours, then they're not, they're not people you can work with anyway, because their beliefs are not open. Right. They're, they're not going to be open to the other things you have to say either, because it's going to be way bigger than that. Right. What right. we have to offer them. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, um, and okay. So let's ask that question then, mm -hmm. um, about your business. And I know I gave you the name and I will say it on the recording because I want to promote this woman because she is an incredible, incredible, mind blowing, incredibly amazing business coach. And her name is Cami Peterman. She lives in Canada mm -hmm. and you can reach her at coachingwithcami at gmail.com. Um, I forget what her name is on Instagram, but she's also um, on Instagram, but coachingwithcami at gmail.com and Cami is C-A-M-M-I-E. Um, so I referred you to go get some coaching with Cami mm -hmm. because she will literally give you every step dealing with all the mind blocks and beliefs and everything along the way. Yeah. And you will have a super successful business in December. You'll have awesome. it. You'll just flow right into it. I totally yeah. see that for you. Awesome. So let's, um, and so that, those are your affirmations right there, right? Yes, they are. Yep. Okay. So she is going to leave her current profession in December because you've made that decision right yes yes right. I have and then but that's what I was going to talk is like then I have my egoic mind saying you can't do that you worked so hard 
to get to where you're at. You, you know, you are not going to be able to do it. So I need like, maybe I just need a download to give me this, the, the courage and knowledge mm -hmm. that I will be okay. And, um, yeah, Don't you know what change I mean? it to say she wants to leave because we're not there yet. Right. Right. So she wants to leave because we're gonna deal with the mindset. Yeah. So she wants to leave her current profession in December and become a full-time healer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're going to include Reiki in that whole healing thing. Yeah. So, so right now what you're doing and what you have been doing is filling your toolbox with tools, with healing have, tools, right? Yeah. I'm right? learning and trying to see what, what, I, what resonates with me and what yeah. doesn't so far. Yeah. 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 And I gave you another one, which is called yes. Zadie Healing. So that's mm -hmm. another tool. Yeah. So I've got that tool in my toolbox and I'm so thankful that I have that yeah. one in there. Um, uh, to become a full-time healer. Um, but, and she wants to quiet the doubting mind mm -hmm. that tells her um, oh, I came up with a good question that tells her she should not walk away from what she has created mm -hmm. so far. <gasps> yes, because we're unlimited creators. So, okay. Yeah. From what she has created so far. Um, yes. Would it benefit her? Let's pull something first. We're going to pull, this is again, this is theta. We're going to pull something and replace it. Mm -hmm. Would it benefit her to have you pull that fear and doubt from her and replace it instead with creator's definition of, you want courage? Courage, yeah. Courage. courage. Mm -hmm. And tell us what that looks like as you do it. Now, as a FYI, as a theta practitioner, you would be doing these things on your own. You oh, would okay. be scanning the person and seeing what it is digging in. You digging deeper. Remember the third class? Yeah. You'd be digging into the root of what's going on with them and these beliefs of what's the root cause. And then you would pull that. You would ask, you would ask creator to pull that. You were uh -huh. working directly with source. You'd ask creator to pull that. You'd send it to creator's light. And then you would command the creator download instead. Courage. Mm. And then you, in your mind, you watch it. You witness it happening. Okay. And then if you want, you can, I like to do that when I work with clients, when I do theta directly. I like to come back and tell them the image that I got because it's a different image every time. It's just like, it's wild, the creative ability that we have. But I tell them what it looks like or what it sounded like. A lot of times I get songs with it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have a DJ guide. Um, <laughs> so I get songs with it. Um, and then I'll tell them like everything that I saw or everything I heard mm. while that was happening. And then um, so 90% in Theta Healing, 90% of what happens is up to the practitioner because we're doing, we're working with creator and pulling in and downloading new things. Um, but the other person can always, because about 10% of it falls back on them, they can always revert back to their old thinking if they choose to and not grab onto the new, the new thought pattern and the new belief. And then they can work on pulling it again and again and again until they just get tired of it and just think, you know, why, why do I keep fighting with this? Like, I'm a creator. I can do this, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's just a little sneak peek at what? Um, theta healing is when you use it outside of hypnosis. But in hypnosis, I'm asked, you're channeling. That's yeah. what this is. In this channeling session with your higher self, I'm just asking your higher self to do it all. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, so that's, how, that's what's happening. Okay. Right. So what else can we touch on with regard to your career? So she wants to like, okay. So what, um, what would be some good steps for her to take to prepare herself and gain knowledge for her new business between now and December? 
You like that one? Yep. Okay. What else do you want to know about um, anything career-wise or business-wise? So um, I've always been called to, like, um, I, I vacationed over to, like, the Yucatan Peninsula last year. And I was there and I honestly feel like I had been there before. Like I even had a dream of me being in the peninsula. Like, um, so I think I had like a, I did a meditation for a past life regression while I was sleeping and I seen it. And then I go there and I've seen like the jungle. So anyways, I've been drawn to that area. So I told my husband, since I can work remotely, why don't we go for the summer with the kids and stay there for, you know, a few for from June till August while they're off school. So we did, we did it. We bought the. We got the bullet and we're going to stay there by the beach for the summer. This summer? This summer, yes. So I'm really oh! excited about it. Um, but I'm also thinking, and I, I feel like Spirit is asking me to potentially learn a little bit more about um, more of, I'm going to say shaman, like shaman healing as well to maybe just get a touch a little bit to maybe go into my ancestral Feelings as well. I, I know I'm not Mayan or any of, but I, but, but it's still, and you know what I mean. I'm thinking maybe there's something there that I'm being pulled drawn to because every time I think about going down there, I all I feel like is I there's something I need to learn when I get there about spiritual healing and maybe even going into the sh you know being more uh, on the shaman. There's something that I have to learn, but I just. Don't know if like my higher self can make sure that I get guided into what I'm supposed to learn or my spirit guides or my ancestors that if they're pushing me to go there to learn for it to be, you know what I mean? For the, op the doors okay. to open. Okay. Okay. So yes, let's do that. Um, is her soul or spirit team? Mm-hmm. Wanting her to do any, do, to do or learn anything in particular when she spends the summer in the Yucatan Peninsula, like shamanism or something else, mm -hmm. question mark, what can you tell her? about this? What is she supposed to be learning or accomplishing while she is there and why? And why was she drawn to go there now? Yeah. Right? Yes. That's so like, super fun. So did yeah. your husband work from home too or what's going on with him? <clears throat> So, um, he actually, um, so no, I'm like the only source of income. I mean, he has okay. his, his, um, his military pension that he gets, but so he has his own source of income too, but I'm like the main, you know what I mean? Like I just work from okay. home. Yeah. So it gives us the opportunity, you know what I mean? To be able to, yeah. to go and. Um, I always loved the ocean and loved the beach. And so I feel like it's self healing gives me an opportunity to spend with the yeah. kids. But, but for some reason, I'm also feeling drawn, like there has, there's going to be something I'm going to learn or something I need to learn, but I don't know ex exactly what it is. Okay. And that's awesome though, because when you guys are there, he's going to be able to take the kids out on all kinds of adventures while you're working. Yeah. Like, wow, that is so cool. That's awesome. They're going to have some good dad memories from that. I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, super quick pause off the lunch break. Um, okay. So what would be some good steps for her to take to prepare herself and gain knowledge for her new business between now and December? And then I added that question that we talked about. What inherited ancestral belief patterns does she carry, if any, and what can be done to heal them? And then the last three questions, I know we're going to come up with a few more, but the last mm -hmm. three questions I always put on here, who on her spirit team wanted her to do this session and what did they most want her to hear or learn? Are there any other messages, anything we didn't cover that you want to send her, give her now? And then if she takes all the information from this session and incorporates it into her life, 
how will her life be different now compared to what it would have been like had she not done this session? Good. Yeah. yeah. So I told you while we were gone on lunch break to go ahead and um, come up with some more questions. But did you have any questions first about um, you did the little assignment that I gave you, right? I did. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then did you have any questions about the video? Uh, no, I just hope that I am that person that can just go off and and not be <laughs> But no, everyone the wishes that yeah <laughs> but you know what you're going to be okay either way right because yeah. it happens like it's supposed to happen and right. i honestly think looking at it from a different perspective it's actually better to be a cha a conscious channeler and the reason why and my guides have been talking to me more and more and revealing this more and more to me uh -huh. is the people who are conscious channelers meaning their conscious mind is there the whole time when they're under, they come out of it and say things to me like, oh my gosh, now I know what it feels like to be my higher self. Oh, wow. And if you're a trans channeler, you don't get yeah. to feel that because your conscious mind checks out and you don't remember a thing. Right. So while it seems really cool. Yeah. It is really cool because then you know your conscious mind is not interfering in the answers at all. Right. These people have amazing sessions as conscious channelers, but then they really know because the whole idea and goal is for you to be able to be your higher self. If that's yeah. how you want to live, you can always yeah. choose your lower self. You don't have to choose to be your higher self. You don't have yeah. to. Like no one says you have to, right? Right. But if you want to be your higher self to not live in as much drama and trauma, right? Yeah. And have way more peace in your life, then it gives you that connection that feeling of, wow, I know what it's like to be my higher self and have that connection. Mm -hmm. And this one woman just, was it yesterday or day before? No, it was day before, said um, she was very, very conscious in the whole thing. Conscious, very conscious, but she was very conscious in the whole thing. Yeah. And she said, wow, every time there was a download, I just had all these like different sensations in my body. Had she been a trans channeler, she wouldn't have felt those consciously. Yeah. So I'm just like, because you can ask your higher self for these downloads and these upgrades and things like that. And now you know what it feels like when you're getting them. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. So, so yeah. don't, um, don't worry. Either one that you are, it's exactly right for you in your journey. Okay. okay. Even well, though it sounds cool to be a trans channeler and not right. have, your, have your mind just totally check out like that's super right. cool. <laughs> okay. So what other um, last few questions do you want to add to this list? Well, I'm munching uh, my last few nuts since that's my lunch, since I didn't have time to eat. Oh <laughs> I'll let gosh, you talk yes. to me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted just, just for fun to find out if I had any more past lives with my kids if, and my, um, like my sisters, my and um, like my best friend, like, you know, if we have been, or my best friends, if we have been together, you know, throughout different lifetimes, that would be just fun to find out. Um, and what is your best friend's name? Uh, my best friend's name is Judith. Did you say Judith? Yes. Okay, Judith. Yeah. Like Judy, but Judith. Yeah, Judy. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. And um, okay. so, yeah, I just, it, it, interesting i have a sensation a feeling like knowing that my oldest tj triton has been my father in a different lifetime i truly do like he is i could almost bet money that <laughs> that that will be the case because he is like he's super mature for his age and he's always telling me mom don't this is like you know what i mean like he's always trying to be like a very assertive parent kind of like child and i don't know i like i keep on telling him like not on this lifetime buddy i'm your parent maybe next one <laughs> i have to say those words to my daughter all the time because she yeah. knows yeah that she because she's awake she knows she used to be my mom in another life so yeah. she pulls that on me all the time and tries to use that on me i'm like yeah no not in this one <laughs> yes <laughs> that's so funny um okay and then um so I'm going to go, this is going to sound really crazy. So when I think, you know, I think out loud in my mind, like I'm thinking, oh, I need to go do this or whatever. 
weird thing, and I didn't know if you could ask my higher self why I do this, but I have different accents for different. Sometimes I'll just my mind will go in and like a different Brit, like a British accent, or sometimes it'll be like a southern like accent, and sometimes it'll be a f African accent. And I don't know if there are my spirit guides talking through me in my mind, or if it's like because I could literally be like looking, taking notes, and I'm literally taking notes, and I'm hearing myself in a different accent. It is the weirdest thing, and I just. And then the whole day goes, you know what I mean? So I just don't know if that's just my spirit guides. I'm picking up their, their dialect. Got it. Yep. I got you know? it. Got it. So it's just, got I always one. wondered that. <laughs> yep. Got it. And then the next one was clutter. Yeah. I need the energy of clutter to leave, to leave me because I will not kid you. Like I, I, I wish I could be more like a, a person with that has um, less stuff because no matter how much I clean and how much clothing I get rid of or toys I get rid of or old stuff, I still have more stuff and it just like never, it's a number ending battle. And I feel like a lot of my stress sometimes comes from not being organized enough. And I feel it's the clutter and I like, I could mm. clean the kitchen and 10 minutes later come back and it's a clutter again. And I, so I need and that. And who's energy. doing? Who's making it so cluttery? I think me. Like I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know because a lot of it is like my stuff. Honestly, like I, ah. I feel like it's always been like no matter if I organize my room, like and I get rid of a lot of clothes, the next like in two weeks it's back to being cluttered, and I feel like I don't go and buy a bunch of clothes, you know. So like I just feel like it's hard to describe it, but I just feel like clutter just is always there. It has always been there and i just don't know if like is clutter like an energy like money is energy it is well you just got to remember that everything has energy and um many people's higher selves tell them that they need to declutter because it will open up energy and clear their energetic space in another mm. way yeah. like i got that i got that like eight months ago um with regard to my room and um because i had moved and it was a year later and i still had some boxes in there yeah <laughs> it was just like i just couldn't get motivated anyway they made me take a week off work yeah they're like you're gonna take a week off work because yeah. this has got to be done and so i did oh my god it, it just feels amazing right yeah. it feels so much better like i was like how did i how did i not do this earlier like i don't know yeah. but but it all has energy and it weighs you down yeah and it causes you to feel more scattered so yeah. um did let me ask you a question when you were growing up did you collect things and was that maybe a form of security for you i think or? so maybe because i was able to hold on to stuff or if i got rid of it i wouldn't have it later um like it hurts like i'm like oh i don't want to get rid of this shirt because you know it's a good shirt like even though it yeah. doesn't fit it even though i haven't worn it for years i might someday need it and and then i get rid of it but I feel like it's, I do have a, like, a little bit of a separation. I, I don't think like that I'm like to the point, like a hoarder, obviously, like I, I'm not, but like, yeah. Okay. Like, let me show you my desk area. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. So this right here uh -huh. to me, like, I feel like it's cluttered and I've got like, all of it is like medical bills or, you know, bills for like, I keep them for 12 months. Like, why do I need that? Like, why do I need to keep bills that I paid 12 months ago? Right. But I just like keep it and then it becomes clutter. And I don't know, like, I just feel like maybe it's, I'm, I'm creating my own clutter, but I don't know how uh, to get okay. rid of it. Does that make? Yeah. Yeah. I got it. And okay. why does she hold on to things? She knows they have no purpose. Need. I won't need them. Need, right, or that have no future purpose. Yes. Okay, so she feels see. like she's a magnet for clutter. She cleans yep. and then it comes back again. What is that energy and what can she do to get rid of it? Why? What is that energy and what is it in her? And what is it in her that needs to be healed in order for this? to stop or what does she need to do yep perfect why does she hold on to things she knows she doesn't need or have has no future purpose okay do we have let me let me see where we're at for questions hold on let me look 
Oh, we're good. Do you got a couple more? Um, just one more. And okay. I think I'm done. Okay. So um, next week I have a minor plastic surgery scheduled that okay. I've been scheduled for a year and I keep on postponing it. Well, it's next week. And I do have, so I, I'm not fearful of it because here's a th that I told my husband. It's like, I'm not afraid like that something's going to happen to me. But at the same time, it's like something would happen. What's going to happen to my babies with me being gone, right? Because it's minor surgery, but it's still surgery, right? And it's cosmetic. And I, and I just want, I don't know if it's possible to talk to my higher self um, and create a future bubble of protection so that I'm okay during mm -hmm. surgery next week and yeah. afterwards. Yeah, and let's protect the body because yeah. you normally leave your body, your soul normally leaves your body when you have surgery. And we don't want any creepy crawlers coming in. Yeah, and interfering with anything. So let's Perfect. do that. Let's okay. shield it. Okay. Um. So she is having surgery next week, and would like for you to put a protective bubble around her now that lasts through her surgery and the recovery period. Let's just mm -hmm. cover the whole thing. Recovery yeah. period. To keep away all low energy beings or waywards, mm -hmm. and to also radiate light and healing energy to her body, to her body. light and healing energy to her body while she is having the surgery. Can you do that for her now and tell us what that looks like? Um, on the current timeline, Will everything go well with the surgery on the current timeline? Mm -hmm. um, is it all right for her to have this surgery? How about if we just ask that too? Yeah. Um, is it safe or do you want to say all right? It's safe and all right. Yeah, we could do. Safe. Can we do both? Safe and safe and okay. Got it. And okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Are you ready? Okay. Let me go to my okay. little right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the um recording off and then we'll pick up in part two right when you're in a past life. So okay. I'm hit the recording off now. Join us for part two.